Now let's continue sizing the conductors of a feeder, supplying motors. But now, and we're talking about what we have two or more motors on the feeder. Now, notice we're looking at motors that have duty cycles. Now, I'm not saying that you couldn't have one motor with a duty cycle and other two or three or more motors it wouldn't have, or several maybe. But we're looking at this uh, figure 18-11 uh, uh, that we want to look at in the stock of uh, volume 2, uh, chapter 18 uh, of stock of designing electrical systems to uh, pick up the, the figure if you care to, uh, you know, to purchase one and look along with the figure or just uh, look at the videos, what, uh, your choice. Uh, but be sure and hit the subscribe button now so that uh, uh, Billy and I can keep bringing uh, these videos to you uh, for you to look at it if you think they're worthwhile. Now notice in the NEC loop we have some sections here that are very important for your review. I won't go through each one of them. Uh, you can do that as a little case study in relationship to this uh, figure that we're reviewing here. But notice in the information given, we have a five-horse motor at, uh, uh, at an intermediate duty of uh, five. Uh, we have a seven-and-a-half horse at a 15-minute uh, interim. And then we just have a regular motor here that doesn't have any kind of service factor or duty cycle with it at all. And we want to size uh, these uh, conductors. Now, notice in the step one, the five horse is 15.2 amps, the seven and a half horse is 22 amps, and the 10 and a half horse is uh, 28 amps. Again, based upon the voltage, the horsepower, uh, and uh, the uh, table that would be used is table 430.250 is referenced from 430.6A1. Now, in step two, we're going to apply 430.24 along with the exception and table 430.22E that we previously talked about. The 28-amp 10 horse is at 125%, 35 amp. There's not any kind of duty cycle there, or service factor, whatever. Now, the 22 amps at uh, 85%, uh, based upon the intermediate duty, 18.7. The 15.2 uh, amp uh, is at 85% based upon the uh, intermediate duty at 12.9. So you see we get an 85% reduction of that load based upon the operation time of the motor. Uh, and we come up then when we total everything to 66.6. .6. So referencing our table 310.16 around page 161, 66.6 .6 amps require a number four. And you couldn't use now by code uh, a number six at uh, 65. Uh, our calculated load in step two exceeds 65, so we'd use a number four from the 75 degree column is what we're using and our table uh, 310.16. Now, if you was to purchase uh, our design book and kind of tag along with these illustrations and look, uh, reference the text and the code together, uh, you, uh, you will find in those uh, illustrations a lot of information that will kind of be uh, important to you. But you will also find out that everything will be code uh, related there with some uh, design tips along with some uh, 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 rule of thumb rules that you might want to use. But in looking at this illustration then, our solution is number four T THWN copper conductors based upon the calculation of step two with a total amperage rating for these motors uh, to design the conductors in step three. So figure 18-11 is simply determining the size conductors for a feeder to supply duty cycle related motors along with a motor that doesn't have any kind of duty cycle. 
So this is the method that we would use under these conditions.